So we all know that today's agenda is going to be DevOps, hello world. Uh, I think Sanjeev just gave us a high level touch point why DevOps or why it is important for all of you guys to learn, right? Uh, in the upcoming sessions also in this slide, in upcoming slides, we're going to learn about it, what exactly is DevOps. Please ensure uh, let's have more of an interactive session. This is not a classroom where one person is going to talk about and second one has to listen. Uh, I always love to have more of an interactive session, right? Uh, so let's please be open. Even if it is anything, please be open. I'll be happy to answer all of your questions, but let's ensure that whatever the investment uh, your college has done, is there some learning that has, has been outcome of it, right? So we go ahead with uh, DevOps. Uh, I think as my name is Sanchit, you just suddenly introduced. I am a lead architect at AWS Quantify. I've been working with this company for over seven years. It's based out of Mumbai, uh, having headquarters in Boston, as well as I'm an AWS APN ambassador. Uh, this year at January, I was recognized with this badge. Uh, and somewhere in April, I was also part of community program. Along with that, I do love to talk about different initiatives, community initiatives, helping different universities. I'm also an uh, alumni of DJ Sangvi College of Engineering, which is one of the prestigious university uh, college. Now it's a university open, uh, I would say, oh, a university in Mumbai. Uh, I've also do conduct different sessions there, uh, and I'm an alumni of that college. Uh, so I do understand how exactly our uh, college and universities worked across India and what are their needs how exactly this DevOps or AWS knowledge can help them to take forward to the next step, and specifically how we can inculcate the foundation to our students, that same knowledge. For sure, you can reach out to me through different channels on LinkedIn, Twitter, or GitHub. I'm more very active, I would say proactive in terms of reaching out in all the channels. Even if you ping me on Slack or any of the channels, I'm more than available there. Let's jump towards DevOps part of it, right? Uh, Generally, I think this is a word which is very much buzz into the market, right? There are two words, even if you Google or you try to get a trend from Google, two are the common stuff, right? Irrespective, you're working on Amazon, you're working on Google or Azure. Two things are pretty common in the market. I want to be a DevOps based organization. Second, I want to do a certification. Does really people know about from foundation what exactly DevOps? I don't think so. Many people knows about it, right? For them, DevOps just simply means, okay, I have a proper lifecycle, development lifecycle, SDLC, what we call the software development lifecycle. That's what is called DevOps. If you are the so, I'll tell you honestly, no, that's not the right appropriate definition of DevOps, okay? DevOps is more like a culture. It's more like a practice which helps organization to scale, to go to agile, right? Like for a very example, right? simple. When you're talking about universities, you have you guys have like a proper timetable, proper schedule, right? This activity, this particular lecture needs to be taken in this way, or you have a different curriculum set. But in given semester, these are the topics you're going to run in a proper trivine fashion. I would say that's exactly is a DevOps. DevOps help a software engineering industry to organize themselves, organize in terms of the best practices, organize in terms of the testing. Organize in terms of the processes, organize in terms of people management that they should do in order to great, in order to get the great effective productivity. That's what is the DevOps. It's a philosophy, it's a fundamental and culture that an organization should adopt. It's not a tool that you just plug different tools and you can get a DevOps. I think that's what uh, I would the biggest gap what we see in the market where people always correlate when you talk about DevOps. The first things they'll correlate is. Hey, are you guys using GitHub? Are you guys using Jenkins? Are you using cloud? No, it's not that the case. That doesn't mean DevOps only relies on the cloud. Okay, partially it's true. Why it is true, we will learn in upcoming slide. But majorly, you can also follow DevOps in your on-prem, in your existing application or system also. It need not to be that you can only do DevOps on the cloud. I know there are certain tightly coupled people, thought process or philosophy people do follow, but that's not the case, okay? Now let's back, let's understand what exactly or why there is a need of DevOps that comes into it, right? So when it comes to DevOps part of it, people do understand that DevOps, right? It's a one word. Ideally, it's a concatenation of two words, development, operational. So in traditional software industries, there are two person, I mean, there are multiple personas of uh, users are there in software engineering, but ideally two guys, two sets of there. One is a development team, one is the operational team. Development team is responsible for developing a software. Operational team is responsible for doing all the operational. Now, when I talk about operational, it also includes testing, 
uh, it includes support it includes the release managers like these are the different things for which keep we keep hearing in the market right this all constitute into one bucket which is called as operational and then there is one team which is a developer team now the problem that comes up is these two teams don't mix up together and build the things right they work in a very isolated in silos fashion the difference we you see is there are many gaps of communication the outcome which is generated is not effective there exactly devops cut both of this particular role and joined one role right which is called as devops you the person who's devops not only can do an effective development but can also do an effective operational activities that's how that personal not only does understand one part of it that okay i'm only can write let's say java python or dot net programming but i can also deploy the same into my on prem into my docker or into my aws system that's an end to end kind of a stuff and that's how this one term that came into it which is a concatenate of both the roles which is called as devops development as well as operational part of it which is called as dev and ops that's how it's a come in and that's why it's picking in the market because in short we are trying to make it more cost effective previously what you guys were looking out to hire two persons for doing the same stuff now you are getting it in one person that's why it's very peculiar in the market in every company we are talking about whether it's a machine learning company whether it's a cloud driven company whether it's any sorts of software development company or product company devops is the core of every company because this is a person who understand the end to end part of it not just from a business not just from the development not just from operational but end to end right from day one to day n until the software goes to the production this guy is a go to guy for the stuff and again if we go through and understand as i mentioned right more from a basic understanding rather than going into the theoretical depth of it this is how exactly a normal life cycle works right if you have gone through a sdlc life cycle or not in the past but this is how things work let's say for example a company x is a service company or a product company or a machine learning generally what happens is they build they test and they release right now build the code is deployed by some x person build is done by y test is done by some different and release is done by different there is no proper communication across all the person right developer doesn't know how it is built or what different flags you need to give while build test people doesn't know how the software works release person doesn't know how i need to or what kind of production scale activity i need to do so there is a full gap which you can see at each phase there exactly devops help right the only thing which devops gets you here is this bottom arrow which is the plan monitor this feedback loop this traditional one even if you revisit right if you go in the past in history and pick up like 90s like in 90s also software engineering in, uh, industry was used to work like this there were great products like all kinds of trading platform are not built in this modern era they are built from the past they are legacy application it works pretty fine right there is no problem to it but the only thing which you see is the time it take to build a software which used to be like years you can imagine right how much time does it take to build a whatsapp now i think ideally 6 months 8 months and you are building a platform which going to scale up to 10 billions like almost if we talk about in india somewhere around 1 crore to 10 crore people will be using actively at a given time more than that i'm roughly putting a number but the scale and the proportion varies in a shorter duration just because of that devops practices what have been included which is this feedback loop constant feedback loop and with help of a devops engineer you get a different effectiveness or different efficiency in their entire cycle right so that's about what exactly is devops now generally people don't know about it here yeah, i mean market keep talking about we need devops we need devops i think very hardly people would have understand how exactly even devops evolved over the period like who invented devops i mean i don't know right so devops is being based on cramps framework in this particular framework you have four pillars at the bottom and a culture so as i mentioned initial girls right devops is a kind of a culture so this is a culture which comes at very bottom of devops like if you want to be a devops driven organization or devops driven or you want to be a devops engineer at the bottom is comes as a culture then there are different things which comes up with help of tools and technology like automation lean it measurements and sharing these are different four people uh, four different pillars you can get it but the foundation is your culture if you culturally set your company in the right direction then with help of tools proper monitoring proper collaboration 
you can enable the devops which is your end goal what you can get right but it's very important that you understand this framework none of the people do really understand or even know about it that there is some framework that exists via which you can achieve devops for them as i mentioned initially just procure 10 different tools and that will give you a devops and you're done but that may give you devops but cultural wise you're not set devops so that's why you see many people or many devops engineer resign in just six months to a year timeline because they get burned out completely burned out they don't see their future in that company they don't see different problems and they said like okay we cannot take that workload because culturally you have not set the foundation of your company and you only rely on that okay this person will give me the devops which is not possible this is a cultural change this is not a one man one person game that one man army will come up and he's going to change your entire organization that's not possible so that's how it's very important that you understand i mean even if you don't know devops that's fine it's always very important that you understand the core foundation and then you start building or importing a brick on top of that one so that's about this framework next around the introduction part of it right so generally i think what we have understood is around the devops part of it that how exactly devops is what exactly the introduction but let's understand the flow perspective that if you talk about a flow then how exactly devops helps right what exactly new thing devops bring which the traditional development life cycle will lagging around so first is around the for sure there are developers who can code in any of the programming language then there is a code repository what you have the code repository we'll understand what exactly the code repository and ci cd tool is in upcoming slides but just assume it's more like a kind of a google drive where you upload your code so you can save or you can revisit in the future ci cd is more like you can say is a like a tool uh, which is like an uh, orchestration tool or i would say like a pipeline like after one action second action third action you need to do this different actions this is a tool which help you to build that pipeline so you can take a sequential action after it so cicd is that process testing it's quite transparent we all know about different kinds of testing and all so you can do testing artifact repository artifact repository and there is a difference good amount of difference between the co source code and artifact repository consider you are working as a java developer your java code dot java code is a source code the compiled version of it which may be a jar file or war file is called as artifactory so that's a artifactory report a repository then you have the code deployment monitoring and logging it's always important that up to artifactory repository it was a common cycle there's nothing new which devops introduced it the two things with devops that introduces code deployment right automated way with the code deployment and the monitoring and logging it's always very important uh, in IT industry that whatever you build, generally people lag around is to continuously monitor and measure that what have you built? Is it going in a right direction or is it going in a reverse wrong direction, right? That's more important to analyze over a period of time. Right? It's not necessary that what you build is always going to work. Like most of the time, I'll tell you honest, I have been in this industry for over seven years now. 70% of the things what I've built is failed. And I'm not ashamed to uh, accept it. 70% it got failed for the first attempt and if i talk about the second and third attempt it's only 10 percent because the best part is after first second and third we learn from that mistakes what we have done right that's why you will keep hearing about right project management being an agile agile organization and all that's exactly the thing that for sure you're going to fail for the first attempt i mean it's very hard we cannot be Neeraj chopra that in the first attempt you can hit a olympic gold right there are very few of them but we want to be that one and the best part is let's be human and let's learn from the mistake and that's how monitoring proper measurement can help you to follow that stuff and that's how you can be a very devops driven organization it's very difficult that you get it in one step but you have to constantly learn on the feedback and improve and that's how it can be help you from a process perspective different practices what you need for devops infrastructure as a code microservices continuous integration continuous deployment collaboration communication and collaboration monitoring and logging all seems pretty wide jargon that okay what are you talking about we cannot understand about it no worries i think uh, today it may be very difficult for you but if you just uh, go through the second tomorrow session and the third session after the end of this three sessions you will understand all of this term what i'm talking about because there are a couple of dots which are linked to the next session and third session in terms of the tools and services what we will be using 
But for now, you can just assume in a simple way, this is more like an automation framework that how you can automate your deployment. Microservice is more like a design pattern for building the endpoints or REST APIs. This again, a way of achieving the uh, CIC part, which is a part of your deployment strategy, which we'll also see in Jenkins. Communication collaboration, we all know. I mean, in teaching, the best part of teaching industry uh, is communication. It's all about communication and collaboration. How well you collaborate with your students, how well you collaborate with your other faculties, and how well you can communicate. So, I, I mean, you guys are the best. I cannot teach you that one. So that's the same thing here. And the monitoring and logging, like the same framework, what you apply in your classroom, constantly evolving how your students are performing, right? By taking assessments, tests, and other stuff. Similarly, is the framework here too. The system what you have deployed, you have to keep constantly monitoring and logging. What are the different errors? Is there something which development team didn't consider it? How people are accessing it, right? It doesn't mean, let's say for a very example, we all have been here about Amazon.in. Like, I mean, all the folks what we have on this call, some or other way would have ordered anything from Amazon.in. Do you think everything on Amazon.in works flawlessly fine? Like 100% is a success rate? No, it won't be even 50%. It will be somewhere around 45 to 50% of it. The rest 50% is the failure. And Amazon learns from its failure by proper monitoring, proper logging, and retrospective. And they take that retrospective, work on it in the lower environment, apply the patch, and again, take it forward to it. So, but the important thing is how we can monitor, log, and learn around it, right? So that's about the DevOps process and what different practices you need the impact of DevOps, right? It gives you high operation, high speed operation, rapid develop delivery, increased reliability, high scalability, enhanced security, better collaboration. I know this all are very driven or very tightly coupled to a software industry kind of jargons. Uh, that's why I will have this information more repetitive in different flavors so you guys can understand in upcoming slides. High speed operation. High speed operation, as I say, mentioned about the WhatsApp example. Now, you can, previously also folks have built, right? Fold folks, my mentors, my folks, uh, I mean, my folks and all those my mentors and everyone have built a legacy system, right? That's working fine. That's not a problem. I mean, I'm not saying they were not an effective coder. For sure, they were the best one. I mean, we do have multiple uh, blogs, tag overflow, and there was nothing as tag overflow in 90s. They're the best coder around it. But the development, the time it takes to reach to the market to release a software, was much more higher. I would say somewhere around roughly, if I put it, 4x to 5x time was higher compared to now. How that's possible? Because, because of the DevOps and all. So it gives you high speed. High speed to deliver the right tools and platform which is required in the market. Second point is overlapping, rapid development, right? Now, for example, you started working on some communication platform you called as, let's say, ABCD, okay? You started in 2015, which was a competitor to a WhatsApp platform. Now, WhatsApp already got launched in 2015. If you're releasing it now in 2021, do you see people will use it? I don't think so, right? People are already used to a WhatsApp. So it's very important that you deploy or release a platform at the right time and right place. And if you need to get to that right time and right place, you need to be having a rapid development. You don't have to wait that, okay, I will wait for the right time. There's nothing that comes up, right? You have to find out your right time now. So that's a rapid delivery. Increase reliability, again, Let's say you quickly develop something, but your platform is not working. For example, uh, WhatsApp. Now you're you're including a WhatsApp. Like, how many times WhatsApp got failed? I mean, it got crashed. It's accountable, right? In last, I would say somewhere around. I mean, using WhatsApp from almost roughly around ten years, over a ten years. Uh, I think not even ten times. Or let's count it twelve times. Twelve times would be the scenarios where WhatsApp would have globally failed, not because of my device or network, but WhatsApp would be completely down. No, I mean, it will be less than 12 times only, but let's consider 12. So for entire 10 years, WhatsApp only got failed for 12 attempts. That gives you more reliability that people trust you. I mean, 12 is also more people do question mark on WhatsApp, but think of it. Like if you, what kind of quality you need to have when you're talking to other people, right? Or when you are building that kind of scale of platform, high scalability. I mean, that's very simple to understand. Enhanced security for sure, like whatever, chats you're doing, banking transaction you're doing, or any other word, any payment and all. It needs to be highly secured. Last, better collaboration. It's very important that you collaborate with your customer, you understand your customer, and you understand not only the need and ask, 
but you understand how exactly your customer is interacting with that thing it might be possible that you try to build something and it went something else but how well your customer is receiving that tool is very important so that's about devops i would say next somewhere we have tried to cover up but i'm trying to break down the entire thing so you guys can understand and capture it well what comes or why people generally needs devops right what drives a need for devops it's always important that we when you are learning something we do start from why why do you need it right if you can answer why for sure the rest of the things can be figured out on its own lack of automation and secure workflow system in business organization now previously if i talk about uh, let's say i was just reading a document of some other uh, some of my relatives who was working in some xyz companies in 90s i would say uh he built an application on java uh, he was working for some companies like uh, some x company and he was going through it i read his entire book around it the deployment guide uh the entire deployment guide was consist of how the software was built because he was a developer as expected right it was not mentioned how you can run the i mean how we can exactly deploy the software how we can test the software or how we can take the software right it was all about how the dev software was developed in terms of the development or it was nothing that how you going to maintain around it same i can see all those kinds of pointers here right building and maintaining servers if you don't even know how exactly the software or the entire application is going to work it's going you don't even know what kind of hardware you need to run that software shouldn't you will like ab main kya karu mere ko to kuch samajh nahi aa raha okay that's the same case it is it's a black box you cannot do anything right it's completely black box so you have no idea about it next no environment management now i it's let's say you take an on prem right i mean i do love on prem people think i am against of on prem but i do love on prem so on prem management okay let's say i tell you i need to have 10 different environments dev dev1 dev2 dev3 test test1 test2 test3 prod prod1 prod2 prod3 i mean there is some business requirement i need to have the multiple environments how you can ensure each of the environments are very logically separated in terms of networking in terms of security in terms of governance it's practically impossible very simple of it why i am saying it's practically impossible i plug your main lan cable <laughs> will you be able to support the remaining 10 environments i i mean i just cut off your entire uh, company's internet itself even though how secured you have how much you can invest from cost perspective you were not able to do anything out of it now someone may say that okay we can put it into different location or we can have blah blah that kind of stuff that's fine do you think you have some time and cost to maintain that kind of geographically distributed application physically it's not possible at this era uh because in terms of the cost we know about the pandemic situation the environmental situation the cost environmental situation and the resources and the time what we need so no environment management slow deployment i tell you that okay you have a software let's say a simple of it right you have a windows machine a windows or operating system you need to take this operating system and install in 100 of your computers in your lab it's practically very difficult right i mean there are no other option you would take it lan you try to automate you try to put it from lan share it across computers but really you i don't need slow deployment you have just one day hundreds of computer you are only one person go and deploy to all the hundreds by god grace no one gets into that but it's very difficult it's not possible no shared ownership the same thing right you are one person you are working around there is no proper ownership is that, that okay 10 computers taken by someone else 10 is taken by someone else 10 is taken by someone else right there is no proper co- coordination and collaboration next point is no proper configuration management no proper configuration management is partially that means is when you build a software for sure there are certain configurations in terms of the flags in terms of the variables in terms of these values how you need to run the software you need to provide or give it to that there is no proper way you can provide around it if you don't track how the software needs to be deployed so it's very difficult next point deployment are the biggest blockers because you don't have a proper documentation strategy you only think from one person i am a java developer i know how to deploy or how to run that java application in my machine i don't even know how you are taking it to let's say the main server 
and I'm not going to able to document that. So deployment is going to be failure itself. Production downtime for sure because the time it takes to deploy a new software. For that you need to remove the old software, put a new software into it. Very simple understanding is let's say you want to install a new OS, Windows OS in your machine. You know that, right? It's going to you flush, you erase your old software, or it starts from taking up the old backup data, insert a new data, do the entire cycle around it, and by the time, then your system will be up and running, which will roughly take around one 45 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes. If you have everything patched, then it will going to take 30 to 45 minutes. But 30 to 45 minutes, your system is down. You cannot do anything. Think that 35 to 40 minutes for a kind of stock market. Can you afford that 30 to 45 minutes in the daytime? No, right? So production downtime. Hacking and security threat. We all know cyber crime has been the top list of currently in the pandemic period. Like we every day we keep hearing there is a data leak. The system got compromised, that data got leaked, that system got hacked. So we need to be very sure that we focus. The more we try to be effective, it should be always balanced, the better we have to get on the security point of it. This are the eight biggest blocker which any organization face if you are not following the devops and that's how you get ineffective utilization of resources misuse of capital working cost increased time labor some processes that's how there is a need for devops for any organization to proactively follow there are very very few i would say most probably the companies which are working on pure hardware they are the one who doesn't follow a devops but even any company, whether it's coming from healthcare, stock market, or any of the enterprise product company also do aggressively follow DevOps because they want to be more proactive and effective in the market and want to scale as per the need of their customer. So I think I've touched base this in the previous slide, but let's exactly understand how it works, right? So this was the traditional development life cycle. Like the life cycle, without devops how it's run you build you test debug deploy and maintain done so you don't know about it right now someone build around it someone test around it someone debug deploy maintain you have no idea about it neither the maintain guy and the development team doesn't even know how it's working in the production the production is just always doesn't know how exactly or what kind of different settings you need to do there is no proper feedback no proper communication, no proper collaboration. Things just work in a very black box silos fashion. Someone build, someone test, someone debug, deploy, and maintain works in a very fashion. It's very difficult. It does not allow you too much reflection or revision. Right? Since there is no feedback, how are you going to revise around it? It's pretty simple. Once an application is testing stage, it is very difficult to go back, change something that was not well thought through on the concept. Because what the major thing you also see, right? DevOps, as I mentioned initially also, it's a process, it's a culture. This process and culture is not just like a tool. It's a proper process, right? When I said it's a process, process and culture, because you cannot only just get DevOps in terms of, okay, I get Jenkins, I get Core Summit, AWS, or some other testing tool, and I can do DevOps. DevOps also tightly coupled with your project management. The way you run your project, right? It's very important. Previously, if I talk about somewhere in 90s, people used to follow waterfall model, sequential way of development. Now, if you understand it, step one, step two, step three, step four, it might be very possible that step four you realized, hey, I forgot to build or embed one thing. Let's say for a very simple, I built a login screen, but I forgot to add the forget password command, hyperlink in it. It's going to cost you more because now you are already in the SQL. You're not working in Agile, so you can go back and recorrect. You have to finish your entire cycle, release in prod, convince customer that, okay, I missed it out. And again, you go back and start because you're already working in a sequential fashion. You cannot go back. It's going to be very costly in nature, even if you start from scratch, okay? So that was the biggest problem. You don't even know. You have to just follow in that direction from bottom to top, from top to bottom, sorry. You have to follow the same direction. You don't have any feedback. You don't even know whether you have done everything right or everything. So that was a very problem that if you identify in testing phase, something is wrong. It is very costly operation to go back to the previous stage, fix it and release it next time. Very important thing, which was very important in the software is, as I mentioned, you only realized the software is working or not when you release it. Previously, uh, how people used to test this, I run a Java code in my machine. If that works in my machine, it's good for me. 
but does it really good for your customer does it really good for your client does it really good for the audience who are waiting no you don't even know whether your software is going to run or not because it's running in your machine that doesn't mean it's going to work for everyone so that's what it, the biggest problem is you don't get the feedback at the early stage the only time you get the feedback is once you deploy and in the last stage when it is in production that time you figure it out that okay the software which you build is missing let's say forget password link and then again you have to do that costly operation again so that was the biggest problem that you don't get the feedback you only get to know the failures at the end of the stuff high amount of risk and uncertainty that's we know about it it's the risk is pretty much higher and completely uncertainty more it resources required and less collaborations uh, we have already spoke about it since you don't collaborate you don't even know how things are working and again uh, high it resource like let's say you release everything in production and then you realize okay if someone forgot the password how are you going to give the forget password link again you have to do the entire development testing debug develop and maintenance so it's going to cost you again so more it resources are required for that so this was the traditional way of how development used to work this is the devops like cycle this is how the devops way works it is the same thing as i mentioned there is nothing new what devops has brought into the system right it just have brought some more collaboration and smartness so previously also you do the same thing build test debug deploy that's what you were doing the only thing what you guys what have added here is monitor you constantly keep monitoring what you have released audit if there is is anything what failed why it got failed diagnose it fine tune feedback analyze and edit so it's a proper kind of a cycle 360 degree feedback what you get at step 1 itself that okay you release something you go and give the feedback to um, developer you release something go and feedback to developer you release something go and feedback that's how the entire life cycle works and the best part of devops is there are two more principles that tightly coupled with devops that has made devops to scale brilliantly right i mean you might come and say okay okay feedback in there na then what difficult it is you can just put a message that way it's all right so there are two more along with devops there are two more practice industry adopted along with this change to devops microservice architecture and the agile project management so devops microservices agile project management three in a box helps to revamp or digitalize the entire transformation right the entire trans uh, change the transformation of any organization devops is the way you work agile is how you should work and at the last the entire microservice what you should build and how you should build this way this couple of questions help you to answer how effective you should work right devops as i mentioned i think i have given lot many knowledge about what exactly is devops agile as i mentioned previous in previous slide also right people used to work in a very waterfall sequential manner which got changed to devops now or which got changed to agile so you get a very faster feedback right you don't have to wait around it agile doesn't mean that okay uh, you will only release to production when something is building even if you know if you have built like 2% of your project go and release don't wait for the entire project so you get a faster feedback from the prototype and agile works on a very simple one liner always build something which is a working prototype let's say even if you have very let's say a banking application but that banking application at the first week even if you are providing the login screen agile mentions go and release to the production that's fine at least you will get a feedback of it whereas if you would have been waterfall model you would have only released the entire application when it is in place so that's a key difference between agile and the waterfall model third one is the microservice architecture and previously if i talk about the entire thing the entire technology was built with the monolithic if the big huge giant box pura code uske andar hai like entire java code you have like 10000 different classes everything was tightly coupled in one box so if one thing got failed the propagation was throughout the entire project now that got changed to the microservice microservice works on a one simple line definition if i talk about microservice i will only do what i am asked to do very simple one liner i am not going to apply my brain i am not going to overwork i will only do what is asked to do if someone let's say has asked you to log in or someone has asked you to insert a record into a database i am only going to insert a record in a database i am not going to update i am not going to delete i am not going to retrieve or view i am only going to insert i am only going to delete i am only going to select that way the proportion of risk the proportion of 
waiting for the entire software get minimized. Since you're building only one microservice, you can tightly couple. Let's say, as I mentioned about the login. Now, login is what you're going to do is get the password, compare, and do. Instead of waiting for entire that CUD operation or entire that micro entire monolithic stack, since you only have one, you have the UI because of Agile, you have the API microservice, you couple, you release via DevOps. You don't have to wait for entire application to be in place. So that's why DevOps, Agile project management, and microservice architecture. These three things work very tightly couple each other, and that gives you the mature state what you are looking. Business impact. This is a very uh, important thing, I would say. I will quickly going to read through because I'm going to share this slide. I'm just going to talk about very high level what exactly is going to help you, right? So when we talk about DevOps, uh, for sure, I think we have understood so many times that, okay, how DevOps can bring the business uh, effectiveness what is required, right? First, improve build quality, accelerated application delivery through Agile, improve application reliability, improve team collaboration, minimize impact of complexity on software development. Whatever we have understood those eight blocks where DevOps was not there and we were only focusing on traditional way of doing, all are here with improve at the beginning. That's the simpler way you answer, okay? So previously we were not sure there was a high risk and uncertainty here. We are pretty sure because we have incorporated testing with proper feedback and one small component at a time, the microservice way of doing the things, the build quality improves much more larger way. There's a proper collaboration between the testing and dev team. So they do the code review. When you do the testing, you get a proper feedback from it. It's not working in a black box. Accelerated application delivery through Agile, as I talk about how Agile way project management can help to accelerate the delivery. Improve application reliability. Since you are releasing the software component by component or in parts by part, there's a better chance that by the time you release the last part of your software, the 99% of your software is thoroughly tested in production with proper feedback and everything is placed. So at the last time you're just finishing your puzzle, all the blocks are already placed at right. Compared to reverse, you don't even know whether you have assembled your plug, uh, the entire plugin in the right way or not, the puzzle and all. Last, improve team collaboration. So there's a proper team collaboration is there since developer and operational team are tightly bound with DevOps. There's a proper collaboration that has been there. And the last, because of all of the above factor, the impact of complexity on software development got significantly reduced. So these are the business impact what you get when you're adapting to the DevOps. DevOps, if I talk about in the case of DevOps, right? DevOps is more about and framework for organizing your development team, in short, development and operational team. Agile is more for the business guys, how they should build something with help of their development team. If you talk about in a very high level, broader sense from a different perspective, it is for the business. I mean, it's for the folks like the scrum master, the project manager, the different stakeholders, like how they should design their roadmap, how they should operate in a fashion that can help them to build an effective way. And DevOps is more like a framework or a process that your development team should follow to get that thing, uh, whatever the, your project team is committing, you get in very effective in an iterative fashion. That's cool. Good. So I think uh, I think we got the right point and the right slide. That was, that, that's a perfect timing. So we were talking about how exactly the Agile works and how exactly the DevOps works, right? This The presentation, what we have on the screen is exactly what can help you, right? This on the left side is what you can highly think of an agile way of doing the things, right? Where you plan, you do code, you reviews, you build, and you test, right? This is how your entire agile way to help quickly prototype and help you around the fast application development. On the right side, you see the different tool sets, what you have, like release, deploy, operate, monitor, more of a technology tool set, the technical way a development team will be doing. That's exactly how you can envision this entire thing in one box. Like, if you want to compare around it, this is how you can get into that picture. That how exactly things looks like under one umbrella, where Agile and DevOps collaborate with each other and gives you what you're looking around in terms of the effective reliability and DevOps-driven organization. Moving towards the next. Now, so far, I assume that you guys have pretty good understanding about the DevOps. So I don't have to sell more about the DevOps. What we can go forward is the tools. Like 
so far we understood about devops different phases like how things work now let's understand what are the different tools that can help you to accelerate your adoption of devops at each phase so if you if i go back to the previous slide right here you can see the different kinds of like on this left side you see a different kinds of phases left as well as right now we'll go and understand where exactly each of the tools falls across the different phase of the devops so if i talk about the plan so the plan exactly means where exactly your agile holds the biggest thing around it you plan you project management you think you analyze you brainstorm all those things get there right so we have our different project management tool is there like jira is there gitlab also comes up with a new gitlab ci even you have a different tools around it like the initial way of doing in excel i still see a couple of organization do it in excel it's their own perspective of doing it but there are tools available where you can plan create a plan of it and how we want to break it down across team and run in that direction in the in the end goal direction so that's the plan part of it code i mean we all know how exactly there is no tool there is no ai tool which can help you to code so you have to use your programming language and just code uh build when it comes to build build is more like how we can generate the compiled package of it so initially what we understood right if you are talking about java then you can generate a jar file war file if there is another way dot net then you can have exe those kinds of uh, if you talk about python then you can have a pyc files there are different way you can generate the packages and there are different tools available if i talk about java itself there is maven gradle and those are different tools available that help you from two perspectives not just building the compiled version but also automating the dependencies so when i talk about the java you cannot just build any java application with the inbuilt libraries that is available by java right you need to have the external libraries which are required so how we can think of it that okay hey i need external libraries i cannot just put everything into the code repository because then your package will be very bulky you need to cut it short that only the code should be there right so there are certain norms and practices which you need to follow for sure if we get time we'll talk about that or we'll capture in upcoming slides but just remember for now in code repository as name suggests it's just the code repository it's not the library repository that whatever you need you just put into the big bucket or github gitlab right so that's how in build what you do is you define the list of all the plugins what you need generally we refer as gradle file or pom file in pom file or gradle file you define what are the external libraries you need from central maven repository or gradle repository and the build process when it is compiling the java the first thing it will go is download all the external libraries which you mentioned and then it builds the process so this way in your code repository just the clean static code recite any libraries and all stay outside of your code that way you can get the latest version of library as well as you reduce the size of your package which is very important when you deploy because if you have a very bulky it's very simple you upload a video on youtube right would you try to would you try to upload a video 1 gb or would you try to upload a video 1 terabytes 1 gb right because it's smaller even that lesser than 1 gb you will try to do similarly is the logic here you try to squeeze your build package size as smaller as possible to upload it faster to your servers while deploying it the next is test there are different different kinds of testing frameworks are available j unit selenium cucumber all sorts of different testing frameworks available around it so you plan you code you build you test that's how it comes around that's a normal cycle of it then that comes around the ops part of it which is around your deploy operate and monitor but the core thing in the middle you will see there are certain integration tools available here bamboo hudson and jenkins these tools are called as the continuous integration and continuous deployment tool what they do whatever the plan code build test what you have done that's what they integrate with deploy operate and monitor so the code which got built which got test got get deployed by with help of this integration tools now there are varieties of different tools available some of them proprietary in nature some of them very cloud native some of them open source around it i won't say there is right or wrong it's completely depend on the company how they want to adapt which tool and specifically if i talk about it also depends on how your customer wants to do so if i talk about so far my experience i have worked across bamboo uh, jenkins gitlab ci and all the cloud uh, amazon cloud native each of the time i see couple of customers wants to be very native because 
the best part of Amazon, right? Pay as you go. You don't have to pay any licensing cost. The same concept, they want to go with their CICD and other operational stuff. So they go with uh, things like code build, code pipeline, code commit, which we'll look into it tomorrow, the cloud native way of doing DevOps. But they go towards that route. A couple of companies wants to be very platform or cloud agnostic. They want a software which works their on-prem into their local machine or on the cloud. So they can go something like Jenkins, which is an open source platform independent because it's built on Java. You can do that. Bamboo, it's more again. Hudson now it's like somewhere been integrated with that uh, Jenkins itself. But if I talk about Bamboo, uh, in case of Bamboo is again, it's a very good tool, but it's a proprietary tool. You have to pay for the license cost. It's an attribution product. You have to pay for the license cost. So that's how you have to find out or trade off between what do you need based on your organization and customer and select one of the tools. I mean, that's not just for this tool, that's for all the tools. Then in case of if you go on the right side, the deploy, there are different options available. Amazon, I mean, broadly, if I talk about cloud, uh, Docker, VMware, Puppet, Ansible, there are different ways of deploying around it. Operate, share, Ansible, Sol stack. Monitor, ELK stack, Negros, Splunk. There are different ways where you can deploy, operate, monitor around it. I would say a couple of tools that also change with the way uh, things move over it, right? Now, if I talk about uh, deploy, in case of deploy, or uh, Docker, again, we are going to study in the last day, but Docker is one of them. Operate, Ansible is there. Monitor, ELK stack. So those are the different ways you can look forward to how you want to deploy, operate, and monitor. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, there are a couple of tools available when it comes to how you want to look forward. Couple, of, I mean, many of them are open source, many of them cloud native, and many of them are uh, very proprietary. I mean, license driven. So it's on how you want to decide on. But these are the I would say limited of tools. It's not just the only tools. There are many more in the market. But you need to remember when you are getting any tools, this is a framework. This seven box. If you're able to connect the seven box, then only you should get the tools. Just Let's not go and get any tools which is not able to achieve any of this. Sorry, any of the seven things what you required. The important part, how exactly the DevOps release cycle look like, right? If we generally talk about so far, we talk about DevOps, DevOps, DevOps. Now, if you want to understand how exactly from a technology perspective behind the scene, how DevOps works, it's very important, right? So as I mentioned initially, some people will have big bucket, some people will have GitHub. It's either or, that's why I've given a different annotation. It's either or how you want to manage your code. Then after the code is managed, you build. Either some people, what they do is uh, from a local development perspective, they do the testing and other stuff, uh, building and everything in J uh, Docker itself. Some people use Jenkins to do it. Finally, you test your code, you do a security testing, you release around that, monitor it around, right? So you release and monitor around it. So this is a different way where you can look forward around to it. This is a sample life cycle I put around it. Again, this is a different way to look around uh, this, how things work. This is the on-prem way of doing the things, which seems a little bit more complex as I will talk about in tomorrow's session. With the Amazon cloud native way, things are pretty simplified. Here, what you see are different arrows and all of this stuff. It's a simple straight line, build, test, Deploy, monitor. That's it. Very simple, proactive way where you can do and other stuff. So that's why I said certain way cloud natives can also help in simplifying this stuff. At the bottom, what you see is a slag. Again, slag is more of a collaborative way of doing this stuff. Like you can have slag, you can have Teams, you can have Gmail, Google Chat, any way where whatever suits works well for you, your organization, you can do all those kinds of active communication. The trends, the market trends in DevOps, right? Uh, so it's very important. We heard about DevOps, different tools, why you should do it. But it's very important that why or what are the new trends in the market that comes up. So automation, zero touch automation is a major focus. Everyone, everywhere, whether you talk about the hardware, you talk about the software, you talk about everywhere. People only wants to follow automation. They don't want to rely on humans. We all have would have read the articles also about AI. Certain people have raised that how AI can replace humans and reduce the number of jobs and other stuff, right? We'll wait for that when that era comes. But for now, 
everyone wants to do in a very robotic way of doing it the scripted way automated way they don't want more of human driven errors the things which are already scripted and done they want to follow the same way of doing the thing second is devops assembly line like entire thing needs to be scripted and like a playbook kind of thing that okay i have documented i want to do it so things i use like pipeline and other stuff right? you already have defined that okay this should be my pipeline step one step two step three if anything fails just send a notification and break the pipeline it's very well documented you don't have to reply okay today ram is not in office so no one is able to release the prod because he is the only one is everything is recorded in his head that was how he previously used to work that okay someone used to take a sick leave his manager used to think okay hey if he is taking sick leave who's going to release in the production that traditional era got changed because now everything is captured as a form of your assembly line in a form of a pipeline rai is in ai ml kind of thing right so as i mentioned devops is not just re required by software industries when i say software is like the product industries it also required by ai ml i work in an analytics company which is heavily driven by data lake warehouse and machine learning there are certain ops you will see right it's devops is one of the biggest term which is in the market but there are other terms you will see if you start reading about devops you will see new things coming out like data ops ml ops those kinds of new things comes into the place kubernetes again kubernetes for sure we will have a third session to do about kubernetes but kubernetes is another way where container form that can help you right if you go in the bottom part of it more embedded security microservices serverless architecture i think serverless architecture i'll try to touch base in tomorrow is a cloud native session and everything as a code the same thing automation and everything as a code or some way collaborate or tightly coupled with each other and that's how these are the different tens or uh, trends jargons which you keep hearing when you talk about devops i can bet you out of this eight terms at least three to four terms you will see in that same paragraph or same block where you're reading about the devops because people always try these are the principles by which they get the devops part of it if you want to get to devops these are the principles people generally do follow to get around the devops before i go to jenkins and uh, the example we have understood about jenkins and code repository and want to take a pause do you guys have any questions so far uh i think uh, i am monitoring chat box sanjit so uh, if any questions then i will be uh, raise hand okay awesome good so now let's jump to the uh, i would say last section of theoretical knowledge so far what is jenkins so i think i have to touch base in the integration it's if i simply put it out what is jenkins jenkins in then integration in that entire seven block it plays a key role of integration In the, if you are looking for integration, Jenkins is a go-to tool. That's what we know as a high level. But let's understand underneath what exactly is Jenkins. I would say personally, preference many people look forward Jenkins as their CI/CD tool. Couple of reasons: it's an open source automated tool. It's built on Java, so it is platform agnostic. It's very flexible in nature. Like before, uh, I mean, there are many orchestration tools that come into the market, like Airflow, Step Functions. non cloud native cloud native jenkins uh, i think has been already in market from 6 to 7 years it was a tool which is not only used for ci cd it is a tool which is also used for complex orchestration so if you want to orchestrate anything like data pipeline machine learning training pipeline or any sorts of other etl thing we have also seen people adapting to jenkins because of its very open source flexible way and scripting way to allow people to code the pipeline structure and again the best part then jenkins provides 1000 plus different plugins so this way you don't have to write the code you can use the code and with help of plugin you can simplify the stuff right i'll show the demonstration i think we are we might be running out of the time so i'll show you a demonstration tomorrow where with help of jenkins how we can launch the aws resources without writing the code just specifying how exactly you need to launch let's say ec2 or a lambda and it takes care of it right so that's the best part of jenkins around it and it's not just limited to uh, aws even if you want to do it on prem jenkins can work flawlessly fine so that's about jenkins around it and again jenkins not only helps as a build process it also helps as a deployment process 
and also it has as a measurement process so anything when you're building around any reports that get generated as a part of jenkins you can publish that in jenkins as well as send it via email notification uh can you share the app performance monitoring i'll get back to this question at the last okay uh for sure i'll be happy to share that let me touch base on this one at the last so jenkins is very important right it's not it's a, like a one tool which you can provide everything build integration deployment and measurement so along with the for sure communication and notification so with jenkins you can strike all the things what you need when i say notification i'm not saying about the collaboration it's not used for chatting and messaging like slack it can be used to send any alerts alerts let's say your build got failed let's say your deployment got failed your testing results got failed those kinds of notification via email via sms or any other application you can send it to jenkins also very limited people know about it there is an application in play store and app store jenkins applications are also available so you can interact from your mobile device also so that's the best part of jenkins again uh, the advantage of jenkins it provides 1000 plus plugin free of cost portable to platform and open source tool that's the best thing right you don't want to get something which i mean you will always love to get something which is free of cost uh, simplify your entire task and you can work on any, from anywhere from your laptop from cloud from from, uh, from any of the stuff so that's why jenkins is very renowned in the market this is how the entire jenkins integration look like with devops so as i mentioned right it can build test or uh, ci cd and all of this stuff so this is how jenkins can fit all the buckets which is required from a devops perspective right from continuous uh, build continuous testing configuration management deployment continuous monitoring and version control so from clock clockwise it covers up the entire thing what you guys need right and here there are different tools are there again it's a very limited tool that doesn't mean uh, it only supports this tool but these are the different processes and pieces of devops that it can integrate pretty well now if you want to go more detail what was before jenkins and what was after jenkins the biggest difference for sure i have touched base the first part jenkins is more like a pipeline orchestrated framework less of code open source right that's what the key term and if you go through the theoretical part you will see the theoretical definitions or comparison will also be on the same lines the entire source code was built and then tested locating and fixing bug in the event of build and test failure was difficult and time consuming which in turn slowed the process we know because things are not automated someone has to manually phase wise was to do it it was all help of jenkins as soon as you build anything right you make some changes in the code repository the pipeline will get kick off and the, when the pipeline get kick off whatever you have done the scripting right i will demonstrate this thing also i'll make a note of it and i'll demonstrate to you how this things work in an automated fashion in jenkins tomorrow because we have covered many of the theory section today of devops this remains the same when you are working on on prem on the cloud so we'll tomorrow do focus more of the hands on part on jenkins on cloud native stuff so jenkins as soon as the developer teams write a code and do it it automatically perform all the actions which you given like build testing release now release is not in production in the dev environment and doing all sorts of different kinds of testing and all of the stuff that's the best part of the before and after kind of stuff the second one is the developer has to wait for the test results developer know the test results every commit made in the code as i initially mentioned jenkins can also help from a notification perspective there are different other external plugins are there uh, with help of jenkins like extended report and all of the stuff they are the they are not jenkins plugin to be honest they are the testing framework plugin which can work or are compatible with jenkins so whenever this testing for plugin get executed in jenkins they can publish all the reports into the jenkins dashboard itself under that job so whenever you run any particular job right any action i mean in jenkins there's a job in which you perform all the actions so whenever you run a job any testing outcome get published on the dashboard that is very viable and again you can send the notification all with jenkins which is very difficult in the previous state the important point the whole process was manual before jenkins now as i spoke about in the first point itself which gets simplified with a single click of button things get start around and you don't have to wait for it right you can just write your code deliver take a coffee break or a take a break and by the time you come you can get your notification it failed or it passed so that was the impact of jenkins not only just gives you the excellence what you need simplify the life of developers and make them more effective
and productive. So here we finished the Jenkins. Next, we'll move with the code repository. Now, uh, this is again, I've tried to keep it more generic so we understand the cores of it, like the foundational part of it. Code repository is very important. Honestly speaking, still date, I see many developers not following the code repository. Code repository is like simply you what the file you have in your machine, like any file, any of your lecture notes, you put it into Google Drive, right? So you can share, you can collaborate with it, you other other guys can comment around it, or you Worst case scenario, you have a backup. If your laptop get crashed or get lost, you have a backup. Same is the concept of code repository. There is no difference to it. There are small differences there in terms of versioning. That also is possible in Google Drive. When you upload the same file, you can also do version. And there is a few more functionalities that are on top of it. But the underlying principle remains the same of code repository. It helps you to version your code. It helps you to provide the collaboration between the communities. And it helps you to so if something goes wrong, you have a backup copy, a copy which is there on the Google Drive, and that you can refer around it. So that's about the code repository around it. Now, two important things um, which differs from code repository and Google Drive. In code repository, there is something called as branch. Now, branch is like how I can define branch is more different versions of your repository itself. Let's say for uh, you have your code repository called as Hello World. That is pointing to the master branch. Master branch is just like your index page. That okay, uh, when you go to the index page one, you get all the copies there. If you go to the, I won't say index page, uh, I would say uh, reading instructor, right? What you have, you can get a copy of reading instructor around it, different segregations around it. So, what the best part of it, let's say you're working on a different team. When you're working with two, three developers, it is all fine. When you're working with 100 developers, it is very difficult for 100 developers to work on a same code repository. So how they do it, they give you a personal workspace. Like, yeah, branch will be like a personal workspace to each of the developers. They, in that personal workspace, whatever the code they want to do, do it. Whether they want to fail the project, they want to delete the project, they want to make some changes, they can do that in their own personal segregated space. Once they are done with all the changes, they can merge back to the master branch, which is the main copy, right? And automatically, with help of different other functionalities, the next slide we'll cover, you can do that very easily around it. So do remember that's the biggest difference when it comes to the code repository and uh, I mean Google Drive and the code repository. Now, what exactly the code repository contains? Code repository contains commit objects, reference to commit objects known as head and historical record. Uh, we know code repository is used for versioning, so historical records of repository code changes. I mean that's obvious. Reference to commit object. That means is. If, if you see the code repository, you get the entire trail. Who made the commit, at what time, what commit message it added. And if you also want to compare, let's say, someone made a changes one year ago versus current changes what you're there, you don't have to remember. It is very easy. You can compare it with the help of references, history. You can compare what exactly was the past versus what is the present. So this is how it becomes very easy. And at the first point, uh, commit object sets. It's very important that whenever you are making any changes or when you are pushing, delivering any changes to your code repository, you give a very meaningful messages. Now, if you just make a changes, I edited file XYZ. Was this, I edited a file to change a static variable or to remove a static variable. For sure, the second message is more transparent because let's say a year down the line, if you want to understand, what did you change on 23rd November or 24th November 2020? It's not possible. You cannot remember it, right? Because you're working on different projects. So always do ensure this commit message is going to help you in future. So how elaborate you can describe, it's more good for you. So that's about the basic fundamental. And as I talk about, there are two things, branch and fork. Branch, I think we sync up or we cover in the previous slide itself. Your personal folder, that uh, personal workspace in that code repository, from the main branch itself, which you can play, you can delete, and you can do other stuff. As soon as you merge back your branch, your personal workspace to the folder, there is an option. Either you can retain the branch or you can automatically delete it. So that's branch fork. This is a different way of doing that. The same thing what I talk about of creating the personal workspace. Now, what happens is right when you're working on your open source project, fork will be extensively used by when you're working in a personal works, uh, uh, public workspace. 
there are many projects which are open source now we want to clone that thing and want to make the changes so how it works is you fork you create a clone copy from that master repository i mean in short you don't creating a branch copy you're creating a clone of the entire repository at your end under your name you make the changes and then you create a pull request against the main repository in that case what happens when you create a pull request you assign someone to do a code review whatever the changes i'm making first logically it makes sense two from a coding perspective it makes sense from i mean coding slash technical perspective makes sense three can you deliver the change after your approval so fork also becomes very important when you're working in a multi peers kind of setup which can help you to enable the code review part of it which is very difficult i mean in the branching also you can do when you're merging back the branching you can enable the code review but in fork widely people do use it when you're working in kind of an open source or a platform kind of stuff so that's around the branching and the fork part of it again uh, there are a couple of quick ones i'll cover there are different products available when it comes to the code repository uh, github gitlab bitbucket okay i'll make it short of this three slides first all these three i use for code repository that's what their thumb rule is now each is a different product the way they want to provide that product that offering changes someone will give you free repository someone will give you x free number of resources what you can add this was i mean the users you can add someone will give you to host static web page someone will allow you to do even project management someone will also allow you to use ci cd along with that stuff right so for very precisely github also has called as github action similarly gitlab has a gitlab ci that this github action and gitlab ci is somewhat similar like how jenkins works like the provide the integration functionality where big bucket is an atlassian product so it can connect with bamboo so this how each tool has a different strategic uh, positioning them in the market and different way on different offering but i think we don't have to get into that strategic offering but the important thing for us is to understand two things all them are very good in nature they are used they are highly available a uh, very good go to tool two it's always uh, from terms of how you interact like the commands are same there is no difference in the command like it's going to be git push git commit git add these are the three widely used command across entire all the three uh, products so there is no difference in the way you interact with them the only difference that comes up is the commercial the licensing part of it that's the biggest and how and what they offer around it rest all things remains the same if you talk about github gitlab or even you talk about the big bucket it's all exactly the same around around that stuff so i think that's all yeah for sure we i had a demo also for how to set up the jenkins and all what i will do is i'll give this i've given the steps of how you should do the jenkins and all what i'll do is i quickly demonstrate to you guys but this will be more like an assignment so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this entire slide into a github repository and i'll share that link with sandeep i hope you guys follow the simple eight step of doing the jenkins setup again you can do it today you can do it tomorrow i'm fine because uh, you will need to also set, launch an ec2 instance so i'm not sure whether you guys knows about ec2 or not if you don't know that's fine don't panic we'll learn in the next lecture tomorrow but i want to ensure that at least by third session everyone have jenkins in place so they understand how exactly ci cd and other thing works before we move to the docker part of it so this is how uh, if i switch back to jenkins right let me just see that continue so i have just set up the jenkins right at before the demo itself at my end but generally once you have the entire jenkins once you follow the entire or uh, those eight commands you will see that you can access the jenkins via this particular stuff right this particular url and you will have the signs of an admin page in something is wrong okay yeah uh, so i'll set that up later on i'll demonstrate to you guys tomorrow again but yeah this is how you can just have once your entire jenkins is up and running this is the first page where you will see after your jenkins is set up where you have to copy this variable this is all commands you don't have to do anything all the commands are very well documented and i have personally tried the same steps it will be there here so i want to be ensure that before we go to the third session everyone have their own version of jenkins up and running in the ec2 instance okay so that's all uh, from today's session what i have for you guys 
I'll be open for the questions. If you have any questions and other stuff, please 